Why are you still playing? <laughs> this should not be playing anymore. I don't know what's happening. What is happening? Oh, I have a window open. That's why. Okay. <laughs> I was confused as all get out because I was hearing my play, my beginning music playing and it was because I had it open on my computer and that was anyways. Hi. Good morning, West Coast. Good afternoon, East Coast. Hello to everybody in between and outside. Hope everybody's having a great day. That's, that threw me for a loop. And so now it's, it's, I've got to figure out how to get my groove back because that was like, what is happening here all over the place? Anyways, good whatever time it is for you. <laughs> Hope you're having a great day today. We've got Barbara here, Melody. Ken, uh, So Terry, GNB, Donna, uh, did I say Barbara? We got a, another Barbara in here. We got uh, uh, Judy is here. So Yarn Arm, Sheila is here. Hello, everybody. Loki is here. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're having a great Sunday. It is a cloudy and unusually cool day here in DF DFW. I almost said D Texas. That is not correct. DFW Texas. Hope everybody's enjoying some good weather where you are. Hey Tiffany, welcome. Uh, so yeah, uh, as you probably noticed, I wasn't here last week. And if you have been stalking my social media, you may have seen that last weekend I was over in. Disneyland. That's why I didn't go live last week is because I was hanging out over in Disneyland having a good time. I really wanted that trip to be just time for me. Uh, and so I took last weekend off to hang out with my friend Tisha. She and I went to Disneyland together. This was her first trip to Disneyland. My second trip it was a lot of fun. Uh, I cannot wait to show you all the photos. Some of them have already been posted on uh, Instagram. Uh, and Facebook, but uh, if you check out my monthly recap towards the end of the month, I will put in a small little slideshow at the end of that video, so make sure to look for that video at the end of the month where I recap everything that I've been working on. So, uh, yeah, lots of fun. Uh, well, let's see, anybody else here? Flicky Cheeky is here. Hello, Della is here. You like my hair? Thank you so much. I got it cut, I got it trimmed. Home just in time. Yes, you are just in time. Uh, so I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I had somebody uh, out there that helped work with me to get this trip to happen, and it was a lot of fun. The whole reason for the trip, to be a com I'm completely honest with you, is because I wanted to see the Magic Happens Parade. I'm, I saw that one on YouTube and absolutely love it, and actually my friend knows Todrick Hall, who sings the main song, uh, and so uh, we both really wanted to see that parade for different reasons, and we had a great time. It was an amazing parade. We saw it twice. I'm not big on parades, but I sat there and watched it because it is just amazing, and the costumes in it are spectacular. Highly recommend if you're going to Disneyland, stick around for the Magic Happens Parade. It is wonderful, and uh, it was just, it was really, really great. I was in your neck of the woods. Yep, I kind of kept it, like I said, I kind of kept it under wraps that I was going to be there because I really wanted this trip just to be for me, not social media time, not any of that. So I really wanted it to be for me. So that's, so I kind of kept it under wraps for a little bit uh, and then posted everything once I got back. So it was fun. It was a good trip. Hey, Teresa, welcome. Teresa's here. Patricia is here. Um, so today we're going to be working on making a passport holder. Now, every time I go anywhere, basically, I always carry my passport with me, whether I'm traveling outside of the country or I'm keeping inside the country, just because I like to have a second form of ID in case my wallet gets lost. Usually I'll have my passport with me as well. And that way, uh, if anything happens, I have a second form of ID on me. Now I have a leather um, passport holder that I cut using my Cricut. And then uh, a friend of mine does leather work, so he was actually able to sew it together. I love it, it's high quality, it looks great, um, but it's just a simple black cover and it's, it's not very bright and colorful. And you know that I enjoy bright and colorful. So I wanted to make one out of fabric and I found a design online um, let me see here. This is from Andrea Marie Chapman. I believe I said that correctly. Andrea 
maybe, of Sospire. If you wanna check out her video, I linked it down in the description of this video so you can go check out her video and how she did it. I like what she did, but I wanna change a few things. Uh, I wanna change how she, uh, from what she did to a design that I like a little bit better. So it's not huge changes, they're just kind of small changes that I wanted to make in order to make my passport holder a little more functional for me. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. And I'm gonna show you uh, what I worked on. Now, if you caught my video on Friday, I think that was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this, <clears throat> I'm still getting used to uh, Texas back from California. So like my allergies and everything are a little out of whack today. Anyways, um, if you saw my Sewers Club box, they sent me some batik fabric to use on projects because they're now introducing their half yard cuts of fabric. Uh, you can do the uh, three, five, and seven, if I remember correctly. Uh, go check out that video to find out exactly what they're doing with their brand new boxes size or their new yardage cut sizes. Go check out that video. I also have discount codes that are affiliate codes that you can use to get some discounts on those boxes as well. Go check out that video. But I used some of that fabric to make uh, a little passport holder. I, Loki, thank you, I appreciate that. With a busy life, one is totally entitled to some me time, well-deserved. It was, it was really, it was very much appreciated and I, if I do say so myself, uh, deserved as well and I loved it, it was a great trip, great trip. Uh, but I used some of, so I practiced on this one. Don't judge this one too hard because I did a practice on this one. Hey, Mary Jane. Uh, so this was my practice one and I did a magnetic clip on here. Um, I like using magnetic clips. Uh, for me, they work better and um, that way, like when I close it, I don't have to like button it or anything else. It just automatically will like flip into place and I don't have to worry about it too much. But uh, on the inside, hey Shelly, welcome. I know it's a little hard to see because it's like fabric on fabric, so it's the same <clears throat> tone of fabric on it on on the inside. But I have my my passport. It just slips in on this side right here, so it has a great space for that to fit. And then there's two credit card holders, and as you can see, I'm not using them as credit card holders. I'm using them as Dave and Buster card holders at the moment, but. Um, I have two little card holders in here. Now I will say that these card holders, um, they do not hold the cards in very well. So I probably would not like, because if you shake it just, a, well, there they went. See, they kind of fly out. So it is not as secure as it could have been. And I think if you wanted to work on a solution for that, you could, but this is what I, I, I like um, and it's just a fun little little pocket. So you can actually hold two passports in here. If I wanted to, I could actually slip another passport in there. So maybe you and your partner, maybe you and your child, whatever. Um, there's places to put a whole bunch of different things in it. So that's what we're gonna be making today. I'm gonna try and polish it up a little bit more than what I did the first time, because like I said, I liked her instructions a lot but there were a couple of things that I wanted to change and modify to make it my own and maybe hopefully work a little better. So that's what we're gonna be working on today and surprise, surprise, we're gonna be using some Tula Pink fabric to do that. Da -da -dum. So let's go over what you're gonna need for this project. Um, so I have, this is the strap. So, oh, am I on? Yes, I'm on the right camera. Had to look for there for a second. Turn the card holder sideways. Ooh, that's a good idea, Barbara. I'm gonna have to think about that for next time. I like that idea. Um, so this one, uh, this piece of fabric is for the uh, closure if you wanted to do snap button or magnet. So this is, uh, this piece, I changed the size of it. Where did I put my magnet? Oh, my magnet is right there. I changed the size of it because I wanted to uh, fit it closer to the size of the actual magnet. On this one, there's actually like a finger's width of room that um, is empty. And so that magnet could actually slip around a little bit. So I trimmed it down a little bit. The instructions over on the original YouTube video was uh, five and three fourths inch by 
three inches of fabric and I did the five and seven, uh, five and three fourths, but I cut it down to two and a half inches to fit my magnet because it fits hopefully a little tighter in there. And I did do, uh, I did do uh, interfacing on the back. This is Pelon uh, Sports Flex 101. Um, so anytime I talk about the interfacing on the back, it's going to be the Sport Flex 101. Uh, Tiffany says, that's how I do my wallets is the sideways card holders so they can't fall out. I'm going to have to remember that for next time. Um, I can't do it this time because I've already cut the fabric, but I'll remember that for next time. And that's a great idea. Um, oh, interesting. Shelly says, uh, maybe add a cotton or twill across the uh, cross body strap so you could wear it under your clothing for security. That's a good idea too. Uh, okay. So there's the, there's that. Um, I have for our pockets today, I probably should put the sizes upwards. I don't know if you can even see the sizes on here. Nope, you can't read that. Um, I also have two, these are gonna become the pockets. Now, as y'all are making the suggestions, you know, take that into consideration for your own personal make. But I have two of these and these are five by three and one fourths and these are going to become the pockets and you need two of those or if you're going to add more because there's enough in here you could actually add um, several more in there so i would say at least two more if you wanted to so that's five and three and one fourths and it does also have the sport flex 101 on the back and then you need four 10 by 7 inch pieces now one of them is going to be your outside. So I have cut one. This is going to be my outside fabric. And on the back of it, I did not use the Sport Flex 101. I did use infusible fleece on the inside. So there's infusible fleece on the inside of my cover. This one's going to be my cover that wraps around the outside. And then these pieces do have the Sport Flex 101 on the back, and they are going to be for the inside. And there is three of those. So these are going to become the pockets. So when I open this one up, they're going to become the left and right pocket. And they're also going to be the very back of my um, passport holder. So that's all what those are for. And then of course the cover as well. So if you want a different cover, obviously I did this all out of the same fabric minus the um, strap here. Everything else is made out of the same fabric. Um, so you could cut four of the same, but if you're gonna do a different cover, you'll need a, uh, a third one or fourth one out that's different than all the rest. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying, I don't know if I'm describing this right. Describing this right. Wow, goodness gracious. <sighs> all right, uh, so yarn arm, Sheila says, I I've, have Tula fat quarters that would be perfect for this. Absolutely, this is a very fat quarter friendly project. Absolutely. Kathy says, hello from Illinois. Hello from Texas. Auntie L Handmade is here and she says, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, I'm trying to get my voice back in from not being live for a while. All right, so let's start off. What we're gonna do is, uh, I have to, I have my instructions. I wrote up instructions and I have to check them really quick. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the right side pocket. And if you're looking on I know this is upside down for y'all, but if you're looking on the inside here, we're gonna make this pocket right here. I do have a kind of off gold uh, thread, I almost said yarn, in my machine. And we're gonna be using that today to do uh, our little creation here. So the first step is to, hello from Plano. Hello, So Fun Creations. I'll be in Plano uh, in August for the Plano Quilt Festival. And I did enter um, some quilts into that as well. Um, Tiffany says, do you have a cup of, uh, did I have a cup of coffee today? Yes, I did have a cup of coffee today and I need more of it to be honest. All right, so we're gonna fold this in half. Remember that this is 10 inches by seven inches and I'm basically folding it over so it becomes five inches in half. So I have it folded over like that. And then I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch again. I'm gonna fold it in about a quarter of an inch, just like that. And now I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna do a top stitch across this part right here. Hello, Mary G, welcome. 
wake my machine up. Tempe, Arizona, hello. So I'm just gonna go across and so right across there as close to the edge as possible. I just wanna make this look tidy and neat and I don't want too much hanging off the side there. So I'm just gonna feed this through and remember that this is handmade. It's totally okay if it's not perfect. Like this is a functional item to me and so I'm gonna try and make it look as pretty and nice as I can. But if my stitches are a little wobbly, it's perfectly fine. All right, there we go. That would be awesome. All right, so there we go. We have, and now as you can see, it's not perfectly straight and that's totally fine. I am not going to freak out too much about that at all. So there we go. We have that one done. So this will be the right side. Full overs, okay. Okay, so we're gonna do this, um, we're gonna make our pockets now. So this is our right side. We're gonna start working on our left side now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pocket and I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna aim for just slightly less than a quarter of an inch. And actually I'm gonna do this on the iron so that way it's a little easier for me to uh, get the press when my iron is cold. I forgot I hadn't warmed it up yet. So I'm gonna, you get to stare at nothing for a moment. Hi, I'm over here. Where's my hand? There it is, wee. Um, let's see, good afternoon. Lois says hello to everybody. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just going over twice to make a nice crisp pressed edge along the top. My iron is not 100% hot, but it's close enough, so I'm gonna run with it. Okay, so there we go. So I have basically started off flat, turned it over once, turned it over again, and now I'm gonna take another stitch and go along the top there. Hello, welcome from Canada. Hope you're having a great day today. There we go. Got that one in like that. Hi. <laughs> So there we go, there's our pocket right there. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this one. I'm gonna to go to the iron and press this out really quick. Iron is important for this because it really helps you get that nice crisp edge whenever you are sewing it all together. So I just folded it over once, a little less than a quarter of an inch, and then I folded it over that second time about a quarter of an inch. I played around, when I started playing around with this idea, I was like, oh gosh, I gotta be really careful because I don't wanna like take too much fabric folded under and I'll lose a whole, and it was, I had, there's way more here than you think there is, and you'll end up just fine. You won't have to worry about, um, like losing too much space because it will, it's not as much as you think it is, if that makes any sense at all. There we go. Ian, are you coming to the OKC Quilt Festival in June? I will not. Um, I, have, I actually didn't know about it until you just told me about it. So I will not be there, unfortunately. June is a pretty packed month for me. 
I will be visiting Becca in June, um, and I may have to do a work trip in June as well. We'll, we'll see what my um, we'll see what ends up happening. All right, so there are my pockets. Let's go ahead and make the left side now. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to fold over in half. And notice that I, I did it on the folded side. So this folded side is what we're folding over again. Let me see. Do I want to do it this way or this way? I don't think it really matters. I'm looking at all the different swallows and all that kind of stuff on there. Um, so I'm going to fold this over about a quarter of an inch. And you can it, it doesn't have to be a quarter of an inch. You can do it however much you want to. A quarter of an inch will give you about that much space in between your two sides. So there's a pretty good amount of space, easy enough to get your passport in and out of. So I'm gonna run this over to the iron super fast because this one I wanna make sure really stays in place. So I'm gonna run to the iron, really make sure that that is pressed into place. There we go. Got it nice and hot. Use my hand as a clapper, basically. Uh, Tiffany says, okay, Ian, I'm gonna go into nap mode now. So if I'm not here to help with the chat, but uh, you're up on your, uh, but you're up on the TV, hope you take a good nap, Tiffany. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking our two, uh, our, our two pockets and we're gonna be placing them inside and we're actually gonna be sewing them we're gonna be sewing them in place so that way we have our two uh, card slots. And I'm just working on placement here. I think I want it about there, maybe a little higher. Remember, we're gonna lose a little bit of fabric. And when I did this one, I made this one too, um, too high, I feel like the pockets were too high here. I wanna put them a little bit closer to the center. We'll see if I get it that way or not. Uh, Loki says, did you use a thicker thread on pouches, bags, uh, and covers like this one? I do not, I use the 50 weight thread. I keep the same thread all the way through. Uh, Flicky Cheeky says, uh, did you decide on what colorway you're doing for Carnival? Not yet, if you don't know what's going on with that. Uh, type into the chat exclamation point PMQ for Puzzle Mystery Quilt from Cotton Cuts. I have not decided what color I'm going to do yet, uh, but I'm still, I'm thinking on it, but I just haven't made up my mind yet. So, um, all right. So what I'm going to do now, I have some extra thread. It's like hanging out on the side here. Let me see if I can clean it up a little bit. Candy is here. Hello, Candy. Just trying to clean up a little bit of this thread so that it's not too thick just hanging out there off the side. That's a little better. A little better. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I think I want my pockets like right about here. I'm actually gonna start off on the bottom one and I don't wanna go all the way through both of these layers, so I have not closed this off yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this back up. Stop it. The, it was trying to close up on me because of the um, interfacing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna stick this about where I want the bottom of my uh, about the placement of the bottom-ish because I'm gonna end up folding it over and I'm putting it right on the crease. I think I want it about there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it. Hey, Heather, welcome. Loki says, we will all gladly help you choose the colorway. I have a couple of ideas which one I want, but I'm also waiting because I've heard that there may be another line that gets debuted. I'm waiting to see if that one debuts as another colorway. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna run a line of stitches 
right here along the bottom. Then I'm gonna flip it over and run a top stitch across to keep it in place. So uh, basically just folding it over is what I'm doing. So I'm gonna run a line of stitches right there, flip it over, run top stitch across it, and then we'll do the same thing for the other pocket. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna find about my quarter inch. give or take. And again, this may not be lined up 100% and that is A-OK -okay because we're going for a usable product, not a perfect product, you know? You know what I mean? All right, so I'm gonna start it about there. Couple of stitches forward, couple of stitches back. I'm just going to run it through. And it's totally fine if it goes off the side. All right, so there is, there's my line of stitches. I'm going to take my scissors and trim off right here. And remember, it's opened up, so this is the back side of our fabric. No big deal. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna finger press it like so. I probably went a little too high again, but it doesn't matter. So there we go, it's finger pressed. Again, I'm gonna run a line of stitches across the top, or excuse me, across the top of the bottom, so that way it uh, top stitches in place. Does that make sense? It, it, I, I'm gonna sew across the top of the bottom. <laughs> That's like an oxymoron right there for you. And I'm gonna sew off the side. It's, again, it's okay that they're hanging off the edge. The pockets are hanging off the edge because we're gonna trim that here in a minute. So there we go. So I now have my pocket and now I'm gonna go in and put my next pocket in. So I want it, I want them to overlap because I want them to be pretty. So I think, I'm, I see I went a little too high again. I can't seem to, put them in the right place. Candy says, I love that fabric, Ian. Thank you, I love the fabric as well. Gotta love Tula Pink. I think this is a perfect project to use uh, this fabric on, at least in my opinion. Get this cleaned up, get out of there. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take my next one and I'm gonna Put it in, that seems to be a good spot right there. I feel like, it, and again, it's a little higher than what I wanted it, but that's all right. So I'm gonna put it about there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this back over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna fold back the original pocket that I put on. And I'm gonna start sewing the other pocket on. if I can get it all lined up. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you put the top one on first or second, you can do the top one first and then do the bottom one. You can do the bottom one and then the top one like I did. It really doesn't matter. Um, personal preference, to be honest. I did it the other way first. So the first time I made the original wallet, um, I did the other way first, which worked just fine. This way also works. The reason I went with the bottom one uh, first this time is because I was trying to see if I could get it a little closer to where I wanted it rather than like having it so far up, but it's not a big deal. All right, so again, I'm gonna fold it over and finger press. So when they're done, They'll be right on top of each other like that. I think that's a good amount of space in between them, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I just wish I could have gotten it a little more centered rather than in the middle, but no big deal. So now I'm gonna go in once again, do a little top stitch across. Back up. 
back stitch. And forward stitch again. There we go. Thank you, Cheryl. I think the fabric works out really great. It, I can't wait to see what it looks like when it all is put together. All right, let me trim my threads a little bit, get it cleaned up. So there's our pockets. So our, our credit cards, our passport cards, our global entry cards, whatever you're using for those, those will go in there. Um, Flicky Cheeky says, if you want the top lower, I'd start with the top where you want it and then the bottom pocket. I did it, I did it that way last time and it still ended up too high. It doesn't really matter. It's completely personal preference. Um, so it's, it's okay if you don't end up getting it in the right place like me. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna work on closing it all up on the right side here. So again, I have my folded edge. I'm gonna fold this over and we're gonna do a line of top stitching across the top there and that's gonna close the um, pockets in. Hello, good evening from Italy. Devastated Italy. Oh no, what happened? Is everything okay? I mean, you're saying devastated, so that, um, that does not sound like things are okay. So I'm just, it probably would be useful to use clips and or pins, but you know how much I hate to use pins. And so I am just gonna eyeball all this myself. And it does have a bit of bulk because again, we're dealing with a lot of fabric and we're dealing with the interfacing as well. Barbara asks, what are you making? I am currently making a passport and card holder, just like this, this was my example. Oh, had it right way the first time. So it has a little magnetic clasp, it opens up. We have our credit cards or other cards, uh, identification cards, and then a little pocket or two for passports. So that's, that's what we're making right now. So I have a little bit of a hang off on the side here. You can make a wallet with a zipper in that fabric, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim the extra off that I don't need. There we go. So there's a couple scraps. So there we go, we have our pockets. We have our left and our right pocket. And now we have our, they're gonna go onto this fabric like so. Now before we get to doing all that, we need to work on putting our strap together. So what I'm gonna do, hint, hint. <laughs> uh, let's see, we've had two floods, one on the third and the worst one was on the 16th. Uh, I am at the moment evacuated from, I'm so sorry. I hope that everything um, turns out okay and that you make it back home safely and that your home is safe as well. So for the, the class, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do it in half and press it with my fingers and I'm gonna go around the three sides and sew them leaving the open side so that I can flip it inside out. So that's what I'm gonna do. Take it over here to my machine. Oops, I almost, no, I wanted to do it. I did it, I <laughs> thought I almost sewed it closed and then I realized that I was doing it correctly. What all projects are you all working on today? I made a stop by my quilt store yesterday because I needed some more fabrics 
for some projects that I'm working on. I was also looking for a backing fabric for my Vortex. How many of y'all signed up for the Vortex project? Let's see, is that gonna fit in there? That is gonna fit in there. How awesome is that? That is the perfect size for it. Yes, I love it when things work out nicely. Cool. So that's my magnet piece. I'm not gonna touch that at the moment. I am gonna take my scissors and I am going to cut across the corners. So that way, whenever I turn it inside out, my corners are a little easier to turn out, but I'm not gonna cut the stitching that I did because then that could end up causing it to come apart and we don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit. Make it a little easier to turn inside out, basically. Basically. Um, Auntie L, handmade, is working on wheelchair quilts for hospice. That's very kind of you. Uh, Giovanni says, I'm lucky that my apartment didn't get flooded as it's on the second floor, but uh, it did just arrive under my balcony. Ooh, goodness gracious, that is terrifying. Uh, Anna says, I signed up for the digital vortex. I'm not sure when I'll be able to get the fabric though. Totally understand. Auntie L said, I signed up for the vertex, vortex, excuse me, after seeing your video, Ian. I'm so glad to hear that. I can't wait to see everybody's, I can't wait to see everybody's who like ordered the kits, but I'm also excited to see everybody's who decided to source their own fabrics. I know that a lot of people are going to be sourcing their own fabrics and I can't wait to see the variations that people end up making. So Terry is making a third sling bag for uh, the week for gifts, that's very awesome. I need, I have a pen, there it is. Having trouble poking out the corner here. There we go, that's a little better. So I, I actually had a minor flood, thankfully minor. Nothing like what you're dealing with, but I had a minor flood in my apartment this week. I was out running errands and I came back to my laundry area with water coming out of it. Um, my neighbor upstairs was washing their laundry and apparently there was a backed up pipe somewhere and it ended up their laundry water was coming into my apartment, <laughs> which was terrifying. Um, and thankfully, maintenance got here very quickly. I love our maintenance team. They are very quick and responsive. And so everything turned out fine, but I did have to like run a fan for a few, like all day to get it to dry up and make sure that like no mold was gonna happen or anything like that. So that was a fun way to get the, <laughs> to end my week. All right, double check that this is the right size. Oh, I made it maybe, oh no, it still fits. It's just the right size though. Cool, excellent. All right, I'm gonna take this over to the iron. I'm gonna iron it really quickly. Um, Shelly signed up for the Digital Vortex. Uh, I was working on the Marines tot bag, but it is on hold now, understandably. I'm gonna press this super quick just to make sure that I, it, I get a nice, nice crisp, there we go. Get it nice and crisp, just like that. Perfect. So now, let's see which side do I want. I want, I kind of want this side. I like this side better. So I'm going to take this. Uh, Barbara says you could also add a tab that covers the card holders to help keep them from falling out. Absolutely. Uh, Susie is working on placement for wheels on meals. Excellent. Let's see, whoops. Melody also signed up for the digital vortex. Whew. 
for what I need to order fabric wise. Anna, oh, Anna is talking to Sheila. Sorry about that. All right, so what I've done is I've popped my magnet in there. And so now I'm gonna run a line of stitches right up against the magnet. I broke my needle the first time I did this on the practice one. So I'm actually gonna grab out my zipper foot because my zipper foot is going to give me just the right amount of clearance to do this part. So I'm gonna switch out from my regular foot onto the zipper foot. And that way, oh, I also have to change out my plate. I forgot about that because if I put the zipper, I use my single stitch plate whenever I'm sewing um, normally. So since I'm gonna be using the zipper foot, I need to switch to my uh, wide plate so that way when I move my needle, I don't end up breaking my needle. There we go. Oh, and I forgot about this last time. When I was working on this last time, I, as I was sewing, uh, the magnet actually would stick to my plate. So I had to flip the magnet over so that way it hopefully won't stick as badly. Let's see if I can get it right up against the magnet. There we go. it up and go forward do a quick little back stitch and then forward stitch and we should be good uh, let's see Jackie says Ian glad it was not any worse my daughter had their laundry back up so much damage they were in a hotel for two months goodness gracious not fun with a six week old, a three and four year old. Goodness gracious. Okay, I did not do this perfectly. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up or not. But as you can see, like that line is not on there 100% straight. It is not perfectly straight and that is totally fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I was going to do some, let's see, I don't have enough room to do any top stitching. Nope, I sure don't. So I'm just going to leave that one as is. And I'm going to trim. I was going to go do top stitching all the way around, but if I do that, my magnet, it will more than likely hit my magnet and I don't want, my needle would hit the magnet and I don't want that to happen. So we're not gonna do that at the moment, but what we are gonna do, that's our strap right there, our, our clasp, whatever you wanna call it. So now I'm gonna take our last piece here, and remember that this is the outside, and what I've done is I've basically measured where to put the corresponding piece of the magnet. So as you can see here, I have some clasps, or I have some um, clips where my magnet is. The magnet does have adhesive on the back, but it's not a strong adhesive. So it's not like you can just put it in there and it'll stay there. And I need a way to secure it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a piece of scrap fabric and I'm going to sew that piece of scrap fabric onto the back and make it pretty tight around my magnet so that way it stays in place. I'm just gonna trim off the excess because I don't need as much, so I'm gonna throw that over there. And since I stuck it down, it should stay in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this piece of material and it's going to, I'm gonna to top stitch all the way around this magnet so that way it holds it in place, keeps it in place because otherwise it may end up moving and shifting as I'm doing all of the rest of putting this together. So I wanna keep it as close to in place as possible. Um, let's see here, we got a lot going on. Auntie L said, I live in a two story house not long after moving in. I had a valve break in the upstairs bathroom. It looked like it was raining downstairs in my family 
room. Goodness, I, that is, oof, yikes. That is not fun, that is no joke and that is not fun. All right, so I found about the spot where I'm gonna go around. So it can wiggle a little bit, but it's not going to wiggle a lot, right? Like I can't get it perfectly aligned 100%, but I can get a pretty good space around it. Let's see, I may need to go down one more stitch just to make allowance. And I am using my zipper foot so that way I can get as close to that magnet as possible without ending up damaging it, right? Without damaging my needle, I mean. I need to go down one more stitch. There we go. So now I'm going around the outside. See if that will work. I keep needing to go down one more stitch. And when working with magnets, it can be difficult because your plate on your sewing machine is also, you know, your magnet will stick to it. So it can be a little difficult to try and get everything lined up. Because your um, plate, your magnet may stick to your plate and be like, no, I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> Ask me how I know. All right. Um, Sue says, just finished my summer table runner and put it on my table. That's awesome. So this is what it looks like on the back side. We have our uh, magnet sandwiched in there. And this is what it looks like on the front side. So on the front side, it doesn't look too bad. Little, little off, but again, I'm not gonna freak out about that. That's totally fine. So now what we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna trim off a little extra because I, I put in extra fabric um, on here, so I'm just gonna go in and trim that extra fabric off because we don't need all of that fabric. We wanted a lot of it, but we don't need all of it. So there's there's a little trimmy trim on that. Trimmy trim, trim, trim. All right, so again, front, this is gonna be our cover, and now we're gonna basically build this like we would almost any other bag or whatever. We're gonna be turning it inside out. So I have my two pieces, the one that has the credit cards on the left, the blank one that will fit my passport on the right. I'm lining it, everything up, making sure it's square. Then I have my, uh, my clasp, and I'm gonna put it with the magnets that I have in it. I have the magnets facing down. So my magnet is going to face down. Then I have my top piece, If I, do, if I do it this way, then it's gonna be right side up, but it's gonna be upside down. No, did I mess this up? Because if I do this and I flip it inside out, it's gonna be upside down. Well, I may have messed that up. Oh, well. Did I mess it up? I don't know. Because if I, if I, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I didn't think about directional. And I can't flip it that way. Is it going to be upside down or is it going to be right side up? I don't remember. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Uh, Sue says, I have the Vertex first month ready to start. Excellent.
Gosh, I'm, I'm so frustrated at myself if this is upside down. Did I need to do it upside down? If I flip it inside? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off of my uh, zipper foot. We're going to go back to the regular foot again. I didn't think about directional fabric. Gosh darn it. I'm going to be mo so mad at myself if it ends up backwards. I want it like this. You're watching the thought process happen and I don't think it's gonna work the way I want it to. Is it, is it gonna work the way I want it to? I don't know. Is there, is there a way to fix it? That's a better question. I think there is. Oh well. All right, we're gonna sew it like this and we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna sew uh, all the way around, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of it open because I'm going to turn it inside out. I'm just gonna leave a good amount of space up at the, uh, I'm gonna do it on the bottom. I'm gonna leave the bottom portion open so that way when I flip it inside out, it makes everything Move other side, hold on, everyone's freaking out. Did y'all just save me? Y'all may have just saved me. How did I do this last time? Yes, y'all are right. <sighs> Y'all saved me. It's all right. Sheila says, once I start doubting myself, I go into doom checking. Same. Y'all saw it live here happening. Yes, uh, I did go into doom uh, checking. And yes, okay. Yes, it does go on the other side. It does not. Yes. Everything's fine. Everything's great. It is all okay. It is all okay. All right. Goodness gracious. All right, so now I'm gonna take it back over here in my machine. I'm gonna leave a wide opening at the top so that I can turn it inside out. I am going to, uh, see the funny thing is the first time I did it flawlessly, no problem, no problem at all. This time I, because I'm doing it on camera, I guess. All right, so now I'm going around. I did do back stitching at the beginning because I wanna make sure that when I'm flipping it, it all, it doesn't pop stitches, right? Do, do, do. Donna, you're so sweet. Donna says, you got it, Ian. I appreciate the support for sure. When I go into that doom, like checking, I'm always like, ah, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. All right, my um, sandwich is falling apart a little bit, so I gotta readjust here. Give me just a second while I probably should have pinned or clipped in place, but you know, that's not my style. Pinnings for the week. Just kidding. I am using a quarter of an inch to do these seams, so um, there's a good amount of room to wiggle in and whatnot. So, should I have pinned or clipped? Yes. Am I going to? No. Nope, sure not. Um, do, do, do. I know Mother Nature is beautiful, but oof, goodness, she can be she can be scary. 
she can be scary. I'm just lining all this up. And I'm also watching very closely to make sure that my needle doesn't end up uh, hitting the magnet. I don't want it to hit the magnet and break. There we go. I think we're going to be just fine. Oops, that was a little too far off. I'm going to go back a couple of stitches. There we go. And we're going to go across the top a little bit. We're going to back stitch. You can kind of see me off on the side there. Sorry about that. Uh, Linda says you could put a little tab uh, to overlap the credit cards. Yep, that is a great suggestion. I like that and I will probably think about that for in the future. All right, so everything is on the inside. Remember when we put our sandwich together, we put it so that everything was facing inwards uh, and our, our um, I was gonna say our bad fabric, our outside is going to be the um, uh, inside of the bag whenever we flip it all, all around. I am going to trim my corners again just to make it a little easier to um, flip everything out and have our corners flip out as well. And I'm not, whenever I'm trimming, I'm not crossing over that seam allowance. I'm still giving plenty of room for that seam allowance. All right, so let's go to flipping. And I did do those like kind of big stitches at the beginning, like back stitching back and forth for a moment at the front and at the back or at the beginning and the end of my stitching just to make sure that everything is really nice and tight and I always hate it whenever I'm flipping something out and I hear that dreaded popping noise as those stitches are coming undone. Um, usually it doesn't, you know, there's not a lot of stitches that come undone, but I really want to make sure that as few stitches pop as possible. So our magnet is on the other side, that's perfect. Don't know what my neighbor upstairs is doing. Thankfully, my neighbor upstairs was super awesome. Um, when his washing machine started to empty and my apartment filled up with more water, uh, it was coming out of my pipe. I ran upstairs really quick and I was like, hey, could you stop your washing machine for a moment? I've got, I, like, it's flooding my apartment. And he's like, oh gosh. And he ran and shut it off really quick. So I have an amazing neighbor upstairs who was very attentive and um, was very awesome about the whole situation. So I'm very thankful. Very, very thankful. All right, there we go. That corner is almost all the way poked out. That one, I think. It's like trying to convince the corners to poke out as much as possible. Now in the original video that, um, what did I say her name was? Uh, Andrea, the original video that Andrea did, she left the very, the whole top portion open. And that, what is happening here? What? How did... How did I... <laughs> what is happening here?
how did I get half on one side, half on the other? I don't understand what just happened here. Did I, oh, maybe that's what it is. Oh, got it. <laughs> I was like, what is, what is happening here? I, Donna, you were right. I was like, what did I, what, what has happened here? I didn't, I didn't finish turning everything out, apparently, is what happened. <laughs> did y'all see the panic on my face when that happened? I should not do projects live. I should just not, it just should not happen. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Uh, Auntie L says, a good thing he was home. Some people start their washing machine and run errands. Yep, that is... I'm very thankful for that. Um, Shelly says, at least it was the washing machine water and not something... Oh, Shelly, let's, let's not even put that one out into the world. All right, that's better. I was real freaked out for a moment. Clickety, 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 clickety. Yep, totally. That was a that was a clickety, 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 clickety moment right there. That's what that was. Goodness gracious. Oh, pure panic. Welcome to my crazy world, right? So I'm just basically kind of working with the fabric now. I really want the um, seam, like where the two fabrics are coming out, I'm trying to press that as flat as I can. I will take it over to my iron in a moment just to make sure that I get all of it as, um, as much as possible, as nice as possible. Katrina is here, hello, welcome. Perfect, so there's my little magnet right there. That was a pray for powder outage. <laughs> that was a something. That was a something. All right, so almost there. I feel like I can get this corner a little more poked out. We have six winners, power out. <laughs> That'd be funny. Candy says, nap time, falling asleep. I'll see you later. See you later, Candy. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully, I'm not putting you to sleep. Hopefully, it is... Uh... <laughs> I've been sewing arches uh, to corner pieces for my DWR. Excellent. All right, so almost there. It just kind of wants to do its own little thing. And this is the hardest part, it, for me at least, is getting the top, well, technically, no, that is the top. How did I do that? I tried to do it along the bottom, and I end up doing it across the top. Well, fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to coax the fabric to bend to my will and do what I want it to do. I'm trying to tell the fabric to play nice. Play nice fabric, play nice. Fabric, you're not playing nice. No, just a stressful day. Totally understand, Candy. I was just messing with you. Tiffany is back. She said that she cannot nap. Sorry to hear that, Tiffany, but welcome back. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna grab my clips here and just clip that really quick. 
So I want to try and keep those in place. I really tried to do this along the bottom instead of the top, but here I am. It's across the top. Great. Love that. Uh, let's see. Well, my upstairs neighbor's washer back was backing in, up into my kitchen sink for a while. She used to leave it running when out until they found the issue uh, and we had to change up the laundry routines. Oh, goodness. That sounds like a lot of problems. find some more clips. Uh, talk about disgusting. I had to, I had a strainer of food in the sink. Dry, ugh, ugh. That's gross. That's not fun. <laughs> Sounds really gross. Goodness gracious, I'm struggling with this a little bit. Is Donna here? Oh, Donna Heffler, okay. Hoffler? Hoffler. Uh, Jackie says, I am cutting up some of my stash into 10 inch squares and pre-cut stri pre strips. I found two bins of kid fabric. My grandsons are too old for, for it in big pieces. Sounds like you are have a lot going on today. All right, I feel like that's pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick press on it to, uh, you know, kind of get everything. I'm gonna avoid the clips. Don't touch the clips, don't melt the clips. That feels a little better. Magnet stuck to my iron really quick. Okay, so I've got it all cleaned up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a top stitch all the way around the outer edge, making sure not to hit my magnet. Um, but I'm gonna go all the way around. What is that? Oh, that's the beginning and end. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna go all the way around um, as close to the edge as possible doing a quick little top stitch. I'm gonna try very hard not to have the magnet hit. So what do they say, like an eighth of an inch or something like that? It's usually what they say whenever they are doing the top stitching. Uh, let's see here, I'm looking up at the Chat, Yo Patty G. You snuck into the chat, Yo Patty G. Uh, Yo Patty G says, Ian, when are you going into a quilt show? Do you wear a lanyard? Oh, when you go into a quilt show, do you wear a lanyard name tag? When I go to QuiltCon, I uh, do wear a lanyard name tag um, if I am uh, usually anywhere else, I do not. Um, because there's not really a reason to, for the most part, in my opinion. Um, so if I'm just going into a regular show, no. But if it's something like QuiltCon or something like that, then yes. Sorry, my magnet's getting stuck. Oops, 
The magnet's getting stuck, so I'm having to kind of coax it along. And I'm also, I'm kind of curving around my edges here, which I'm not doing a great job at, but hopefully it's not horrible. It's not the best job ever, but it's not horrible. Right now I'm going across the top, just closing in the top. I did make my own name badge when I went to my first quilt con in uh, 20, uh, what was that, 2020. Um, I did make my own name badge lanyard uh, and it worked really well, um, but it was not very pretty. I, it was my first time attempting the pattern for it and so um, it was not very pretty to be blatantly honest with you. Um, I still have the pattern, so I may end up making another one, uh, but it was not pretty. <laughs> not pretty. But that's okay. What did I just knock over? I just knocked, oh! <laughs> the magnet just caught onto the plate that's sitting in front of my sewing machine um, and tried to start dragging the, um, the, my uh, drawer along. Whoopsies. Okay, where's the edge? Okay, I'm gonna go really slow over here because I don't want it to hit the magnet. So I'm kind of going a little slow. Ooh, I didn't hit it. Look at me. I was so worried I was gonna hit that magnet and break my needle and cause all kinds of problems, but it did okay. I see a question, give me two seconds to finish up this stitch and I will be able to answer your question. I'm gonna back stitch and go forward again and then there we go. All right, so um, Yo Penny G says, thanks, what do you carry when you go to quilts shows? Tote bags for all the purchases, backpack, etc." cetera. So, um, when I have gone to quilt shows, I, um, most of the time, I don't carry a lot with me. I have a smaller backpack um, that I got from Disney. It's one of the lounge fly bags. I usually will carry one of those with me because a lot of times I'm carrying um, my phone, a tripod, um, a steady cam, a microphone, stuff like that. So I usually will carry something small. Um, but a tote bag should usually fit whatever you're going to be purchasing unless you know that you're going to be purchasing like major big items. Um, usually a tote bag will be perfectly fine. They don't allow, a lot of shows don't allow rolling bags. Um, usually you can get away with a backpack, but any rolling bags um, will not be allowed in. Some shows don't allow backpacks in. Um, definitely uh, drinks are off limits. The only exception would be water to that. Um, but for the most part, I keep a small, a small bag with me usually. Uh, Joanna says, Ian, I have found that if before I turn something right side out, I trim excess around the edge and then iron it even with the edge flip right side out and then make a little tweak before I do the top stitching. I totally understand and that is absolutely one way to do it. Um, it Every project that I do, when I do the top stitching and flipping and all that kind of stuff, it always has its own kind of, what am I trying to say? Like each project has its own personality to deal with. So you just never know what it's gonna be like. But here is the finished product. I have my magnet on here. Close, thank you. So I have my little magnet. Oop, I got a stray thread right there. 
But there's our clasp. And I put it probably a little too far out on the edge, but that's all right. So there's our little magnet close. And then on the inside, we've got all that. So I'm gonna transfer all of my stuff over into this one. Oops, we got some more threads to trim. There we go. There we go. Uh, so there is my passport. My passport slips in right there. And then these are actually deeper pockets than what I anticipated. I must have changed something somewhere, but there I have my pockets and I can actually, I can actually put two cards in there now. Those are deeper pockets. I don't know what I did differently, but it, I did something different apparently, but there we go. So there's our card pocket slips. There is our magnetic class. There we go. Uh, about popping stitches when turning right side out. Uh, I have found that if I decrease the stitch size to two or 2.5, especially on curves and corners, less popping, good to know. Um, let's see, Auntie L says, Ian, do you find that the aisles at a quilt show have wide enough accessibility for walkers and wheelchairs? Yes, especially since COVID, I have noticed that the um, uh, walkways are a little bigger um, to allow more people through. So yes, usually they are big enough and they, uh, they are required to be big enough to allow wheelchair. They should be, they should be big enough to allow wheelchairs and walkers to go through them. Um, Yo Petty Jesus, thanks Ian. The project I'm working on needs accessories and good job on the passport holder. Thank you. So there's, and it has my passport on this side. However, you may have known uh, or done that because I came in late. No worries, no worries. Yes, Katrina, you can definitely put the cards in. Ver uh, maybe, can you put the cards in vertically? Yeah, you can. Look at that. Could stick the cards in vertically, just like that. Although they're a little more loose. They like feel a little more loose there. So I would stick them in horizontally, but I wonder, let's do a test. I wonder if I've made it big enough now that do they fall out? Oh. They're not falling out. <laughs> Whoops, now they did. It was harder for them to fall out. So, oops, my magnets just tried to link up there. Um, I'm glad I'm using these fake cards and not real cards. Um, cause then you might've seen my, I didn't, my ID just fly everywhere anyways, but look how pretty that is. I love that. I agree. It's very bright. It's very colorful. And then on the inside, we've got the nice little, nice little inside. So there we go. I didn't quite, no, I did line them up. I thought I didn't line them up very well, but there's, there's enough wiggle room here. Like. Yeah, that's plenty of room. I love that. I love that. And it looks pretty. I like how I framed that uh, deer pretty well there. And then on the back, it's just got the floral and stuff like that. So it came out pretty well. I like that. I'm going to be holding on to that. There we go. That's our project for today. What did everybody think? Did you like it? Do y'all like the project for today? I like this quilt behind me. I can't wait to get that to my quilter. Um, but yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that. Again, this is not, and it is not upside down. Thank goodness. I, for a moment there, I freaked out and was like, oh gosh, I just put it upside down. No, I didn't. It's totally fine. Uh, if I was to fix one thing, it is, so I probably should have moved the, deer head over a little bit so that way it would allow for more room for the clasps to keep everything closed but it still fits in um, pretty nicely so I'm not worried about it too much I was trying to put this under the camera for you <laughs> oh man 
Joanna says they also make thin RFID fabric by the art, so that way you can add it without the bulk. Kind of expensive, but it does add protection. My wallet is an RFID protecting wallet. Um, so that way nobody can scan my, like a lot of our credit cards and debit cards now have tap to pay. And so my wallet actually protects against uh, that. So, but yes, you can purchase that fabric. And I've seen a couple of people purchase it for their, for their creations. So. Did I, am I missing a spot? Did it, no, okay. Mm, oh, I did. I just noticed that I didn't quite catch all the fabric, so I'm gonna go back and fix that here in a minute uh, after I get off the live stream here because I just noticed that there's a little tiny part that didn't quite uh, catch all the way, so I'm gonna go in and fix that. I don't know how I managed to do that either. Always happens, right? There's always one spot where you're like, dang it, dang it. Uh, you should make one. You should make one. And like I said, the original video is from uh, and, uh, Andrea Marie Chapman over at So Spire. I did link to her video down in the description of this video. Full credit goes to her. Just changed a few things, uh, mostly like the credit card holder, how that's done. And then she left the entire top open and I didn't like that. I wanted my corners to be able to be a little easier to put together. So um, I did um, change by um, closing in a little bit on them. So I caught the corners before flipping it inside out. That's basically what it was. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for today. I don't think I have anything else. I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me. I will be live again next week. And then uh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna be live next week and I don't know what we're gonna be doing yet, but uh, it is my birthday week next week. So I've gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for the live video. It may just be kind of the puzzling. I, I sit here and I play with the magnet a lot. I, this has been sitting on my table here and I've been watching TV and I'm just sitting here like, playing around with the magnet all day. It's too funny. Anyways, I think that's all I've got today. So I hope everybody has a great day. And remember guys, normals, just the setting on the dryer. I will see you very soon. Look for an event being posted this week on what's gonna happen on next weekend. We're gonna sew something, don't know what, but we'll sew something together. Till then, I'll see you next time. Now I gotta hit the button. Where's the button? Oh, I found it. Okay, bye.